Hello, I'm, I'm Marion Croak, and I'm a VP of Engineering, and I have the pleasure to announce that I will be the lead for the Responsible AI Research and Engineering Center of Expertise. Hi, Dr. Croak. How are you? I am great. How are you doing? I'm really excited to be here with you today. Same. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Can you, can you share a little bit more about the Center for Expertise on Responsible AI? Um, what's the purpose of pulling this together and, and why now? You know, this is an, an incredibly important area for Google and, as I said, for the, for the world, really. I'm excited to be able to um, galvanize the, the brilliant talent that we have at Google working on this and, and, you know, consolidate them in a way where there's, you know, synergistic unification of their talents. We have to make sure that we have the frameworks and the software and the best practices that, that are being designed by the researchers and the applied engineers and infuse that within the PA so that we can proudly say that our systems are behaving in responsible ways. We use the word synergy a lot and we throw that word around, but I actually think this is a really good example of, of why synergy is important. It's bringing people from all over the company together, researchers, engineers, product teams, uh, to really hone in and focus on this, this very important topic. Um, can you um, share a little bit more about some specific examples of projects uh, that the center will take on to ensure that uh, AI solutions, as you sort of alluded to already, are ethical, equitable, and transparent? Sure. So one important thing that I'd like to start doing day one is to have a very structured approach for how we um, interact with our PAs and our partners in our PAs. And in order to inform that work and make sure that we're prioritizing the right things, I think we need to do a critical, a methodical, critical assessment of all the AI systems that are deployed or currently being designed and try to understand where the gaps are. Um, and then, you know, partner with our, our colleagues in the PAs to mitigate both from a short-term and long-term perspective um, potential harms that can exist. I personally love to know what I don't know. Yes. Um, it helps me fill gaps in my own life. So I'm really excited that that's, that's an approach we're going to be taking. Um, it's definitely needed. How do you envision that those projects are going to help improve how AI is developed and deployed across our products and solutions? You know, that's, that's the heart of our, our mission is to make sure that we are providing those improvements. And we use um, our AI systems for uh, a service that we've deployed throughout India and Bangladesh to predict um, when floods are going to arise. And we provide the service, you know, in those regions to help alert people before the floods actually start. So you can imagine if we look at climate change, yes, and forecasting and, and deploy, you know, those types of models throughout the world, we could, for example, help farmers determine the best time to plant certain crops or the best locations to plant those crops and when to harvest them um, with greater precision. And, you know, I could go on and on and on about just the amazing work that so many researchers have done that, that just provide enormous benefits to the world. You know, looking ahead um, years from now, uh, what's it going to look like if if we do all the things you said, if we do them well? You know, if you look at things like as simple as like self-driving cars, right? As simple, that's not simple, but you know, I think one day that will be much more prevalent, right? In our society, look at um, techniques for diagnosing and preventing diseases with more precision. And you can just think of everyday life, I think, being improved immensely with this technology. I, I deeply believe in its power to transform the world. However, um, I think with the work that we will be doing, what we will need to do is ensure that that technology is, is being used in a, in a fair way, in an equitable way, in a safe way, 
so that um, the harms that it could potentially produce, we've mitigated against them and we've protected the world from that possible harm. Yeah, and and just to add to that, the, the a piece that you you've mentioned before too is also around transparency. I think yes. I think a lot of people don't understand um, how these how the the technology is processed and how the decisions are made, how the how the algorithms work, and so I think having that clarity uh, is is going to be really important as well. So, Marion, is there is there anything you think? Um, people are missing in this conversation about the impact of technology on people and, and society? The, the thing I would say to people is to understand that this field, the field of responsible AI and ethics is new. You know, it, most institutions have only developed principles and they're very high level abstract principles in the last five years. And so there's a lot of dissension. There's a lot of conflict in terms of trying to standardize on normative definitions of these principles and you know whose definition of fairness or safety are we going to use and so there's a there's there's quite a, a lot of conflict right now within the field and it can be polarizing at times and what i'd like to do is just have people, you know, have the conversation in a more diplomatic way, perhaps, than we're having it now, so that we can truly advance this field. So I know you've got a lot to do. Um, yes. So I want to first of all just thank you for your time today. Uh, I look forward to connecting with you uh, on this work uh, in the future. So thank you so much. I appreciate the time and the opportunity to talk about this.